Hey guys, welcome to Smart Woman Read Romance, a book review podcast where we fangirl over all things romance. I am Jessen. And I'm Juliet. And today we're going to be reviewing The Viscount Who Loved Me, the second book in Julia Quinn's Bridgerton series, which is like a total favorite it's, for us. Yes. We, we love yes. it. But before we dive in, we want to make sure that you subscribe to our podcast. And if you mm-hmm. would, could you please rate and review us so that other listeners can find us? Juliet and I love getting feedback from our listeners. So follow us on social media pages at SWReadROM. If you're looking for some extras, join our Patreon for access to exclusive giveaways, a look behind the scenes of our episodes, and exclusive content, including monthly videos featuring Q&As and some fun games. Mm-hmm. Special shout out to our patrons over on Patreon. Thank you so much for the support, guys. We really appreciate it. Oh, my. So what have we been <clears throat> up to? What have oh, we been up to? you know what? I've been meaning... And maybe I'll ask in a, um, maybe I'll ask in a, um, poll on Instagram. Okay. Yeah. Instagram polls. I love those. Yeah. I love those too. I love getting feedback from Mm -hmm. y'all, but, um, yeah. So we love doing mini sods and we hope that you love our mini sods too. They're, we try to make those short and sweet Mm -hmm. for like short commutes and stuff. Exactly. And, um, we've just been thinking about other topics. Like, um, I know that we said that we wanted to do, um, pet peeves in romance mm-hmm. like what what are our pet peeves that like really aggravate us when we're reading a book and be like no not i found this one the other again. day i was like i'm Did adding you? this remember <laughs> yes it is so funny i actually need to go add it i do have a um i do have a little google doc yeah um ready for the pet peeves because i have quite a few i might have to limit us on that i don't yeah, want you, to- <laughs> you have you have a list i do you i have, have i have quite a few list. um so that's definitely when we wanted to do um also i thought a fun one would be unrealistic sex scenes like oh my gosh yeah you're always like talking about how find, shower scenes are, are hard y'all like, yes i want to always find, talk about that like the craziest the craziest sex scenes and i'm just like how are they That's doing that happening. are they acrobats <laughs> like what is happening is she a contortionist um, <laughs> but i thought that that would be a fun one but we also want to get feedback from you guys if you have any suggestions yeah. any mini says that uh in particular that you want that you would like to hear us record. And yeah, we'll definitely be open to doing that on the podcast here. So Juliet is going to start us off and tell us a little bit whatever we need to know about the Bridgertons. Okay. Julia Quinn's Bridgerton series chronicles the love stories of the iconic eight Bridgerton children. Masterfully weaving humor and drama, Quinn turns her attention to the head of the Bridgerton family as he seeks a wife who he would never be in danger of loving. Hmm. But the best laid plans can topple when faced with an immovable force or a bee (laughs) and a Kate. Oh yeah. (laughs) These vibrant characters practically jump off the page. Thanks to Quinn's skilled writing, the sexual tension and emotional character arcs will have you at the edge of your seat, wondering what will happen next. What will happen next? (laughs) Now, so Julia Quinn has been a favorite of ours for probably almost a decade now, I want to say. And, um, I have to say that Julia Quinn's historical romance, because I had, I think I had picked up a couple historicals. And before that, I think I read the Philippa Gregory novels. Which, and then we were looking at Stephanie Lawrence, I think we were. I think Stephanie Lawrence came was after. After, mm-hmm. after Julia, maybe so. Yeah, because I think that after we found Julia Quinn, because I love Julia Quinn's writing style. Because mm-hmm. not only Me is it too. historical, it's almost kind of rom com y. Yes, too. you know what I'm so saying? But funny. It, it's fitting, and then, like the yeah. setting, and the, it's just awesome. And I love the way that she writes her characters. Mm-hmm. It's. I find that she just has a really good balance between like drama and humor. Agreed. So I really like it. It's like the brainchild between historical romance and rom-com. Yes. And um, and she did explore some dramatic themes in this one, which I thought oh, was really yes. interesting. I think that, that, that that's why. I because it's so hard picking one of the one Bridgerton history. novels to do, please. I you know, know. <laughs> and but I always find, found the um, relationship between the two mains very interesting mm-hmm. in this one. So yeah, yeah. Um, they have yeah. a theme that we yeah, had talked about earlier. Yeah, she's talking about um, well, this irrational fear both of them have, mm-hmm. you know, and so it stems from very logical reasons, exactly. But it just overtakes their life and like sort of haunts them and guides them and 
not so great ways. Yeah. You know what I mean? And hinders um, them a little bit, I have yeah. to say. I won't get too spoilery about it, but yeah. I just thought it was a very interesting theme or topic for historical romance. You just don't see that kind of thing. You right. Know what I mean? Exactly. It's not just like the storyline was not your typical cliche historical mm-hmm. romance. Like, exactly. yes, we have a rake and yes, yes we have, you know, <laughs> The the wallflower who nobody's right, really paying attention right. to, but I think that Julia Quinn just um she definitely explores deeper themes and it just makes the story more memorable mm-hmm. and stand out and I think that's why and she does the, a good job of balancing like you said that drama mm-hmm. and and humor and wit exactly and I think that's what makes the British Hens really stand out so um there is a really fun thing that happens throughout these novels <laughs> and it's the whistle down the whistle down is written by lady whistle down <laughs> this obscure figure of the ton and she writes about all the aristocrats yeah the gossip and, column yes it's a gossip column <laughs> it's, it's awesome. so fun nobody <laughs> knows who she is and there's mm-hmm. speculation and there's speculation between our characters and um some more novels and everybody's just like who could she be she has to be one of us because she's, she's one privy of us. to a lot of mm-hmm. secrets she's in our like circle and, and it's, it's a real fun thing to wonder about while you're reading it it's definitely like, is and especially now i mean of course you do find yeah out we know who it who is now <laughs> is writing it over the course of the series but it's fun going back and go going read it and being mm-hmm. like aha that was fun for clue? me this time because yeah. this was my, this was my first reread and it literally is, had to have been eight years since i've read this yeah. book and so i was like oh my god i remember this part and i kept <laughs> messaging jess and i was like i don't know what's going on i don't remember any of this wait no I still, yes i do yeah she's <laughs> like, like oh doesn't this happen later and i was like, like no, yep you're right you're right <laughs> but it was it's it's uh, fun and lady whistle down you know what else i thought was just so funny is when everybody else is talking about her at all the soirees and mm-hmm. stuff and they're all like oh when she's found out she'll be ruined yes, you know and so it's yeah. just like i can't <laughs> it's just anyway, so funny to see fun. how it'll all play out so it's like a little bit of a mystery that just kind of like carries out yeah. over and um ties all the novels yeah. together and so i yeah. think that that's just a really fun element that she it has is. going on so there cute. and it okay. just makes everything stand out yeah so. So tell us about the characters, Jess. Oh, yeah. Let's get to our main. So as the eldest of eight Bridgerton children, Anthony feels a deep responsibility for all of his siblings since his father died a decade ago. He's a notorious rake and a frequent subject of Lady Whistledown's articles. (laughs) Anthony finally decides it's time to find a wife. He runs into trouble when his top candidate has an older sister who isn't so impressed with his reputation and wants her sister to marry a kind man, not a rake like Anthony. So Kate Sheffield knows that her sister Edwina is their best chance of catching a rich husband to support the family, but doesn't like that the notorious Anthony Bridgerton is interested. Kate and Anthony frequently clash as she tries to find a love match for her sister. But is there more behind their intense interactions than just loathing? Could it be mm-hmm. attraction? Mm. Mm. I, I don't do know. Believe. I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> so Me- without further ado, I think we're going to get into the spoiler section because oh, there's, yeah. there's a couple other things that we want to talk about before we actually get into the breakdown, but discussing some spoilery subjects. Spoileries. So we're going to have, we need some more time in the spoiler section. So if you've not read this book, what are you doing? Please go pick up this series because it's oh, just yeah. such an amazing series. You will not yes. be disappointed. And this one is the one that's being picked up by Netflix. Is that right? Is yes. yes. I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Guys. You know, this, th- these books, these characters are going to be in Netflix. I'm dying Shonda thinking Rhimes. about it. Yes. Shonda Rhimes picked up the Bridgerton series. It's going to be a TV show on yeah. Netflix. So. I'm rereading the whole series this summer. It's, After reading this book, I'm like, I have to get back to them. I love yes. them so much. They're amazing. So, yep. so, so go read, go guys. Go pick up these books before Shonda makes them into TV shows because, of course, the books are always better mm-hmm. than the movies. <laughs> All right, guys, we're entering to the spoiler section. If you've not read, don't go forward. All right, guys, we are in the spoiler section. And before we get into the breakdown, we're going to do our showdown segment. <laughs> Juliet is going to kick us off with her favorite scene of this book. Okay. What was your favorite scene? So, okay. Interested. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> when I finished reading, it was I was debating between two, and then I leaned toward one, and then I read the second epilogue, and then I went back to my original. Oh. So. Have you read the second epilogue for this yes. book? Okay. Okay. Well, then tell, tell them a little bit about like what the second epilogues are first. I know they did second epilogues for all of the all, the whole 
right. series. You can she read wrote, all, like right. once you read all of the um, series, she actually combined all the second epilogues into one, into one, one book. book. It's called right. The Bridgerton's okay. Happily Ever After. So you can read yeah. all of their second epilogues. Basically, it's like a check-in with them, like a few years down the road and stuff yeah. like that. You get to see where they're at. And this second epilogue is f- freaking hilarious. But it, it reminded me, and but, but Anthony says something in it that is like, okay, I'm going with my original. Okay, so go with your my original. My showdown, my original one, is the Paul Mall game. I love that scene. <laughs> and it's actually it was it it was definitely Okay. A top contender for I me know. As well. Okay, so the Paul Mall game, guys, it's when they're playing it's like a version of cricket, you know, with wickets and, mm-hmm. and mallets and but stuff where they hit the ball. But Bridgerton. this is Bridgerton sabotage version. Yeah. Okay. It's all that's about the, the sabotage. That's not the uh, aim of the game. <laughs> Nobody wants to actually no, win. Wait, they want to win, but by cheating, like have they have Bridgerton rules. Yeah, so it's like, like who can cheat the best? Who can cheat the best? And you who know? can mess up the other person's <laughs> game the best? Yeah. So um so in the second epilogue, Anthony says, and I thought this, I thought this when I was reading the book, he says, that was when I fell in love with her. I didn't know it at the time, but that was when he fell for her. Mm-hmm. And so this incident where they're playing this game and he's sabotaging her ball and they're like messing around all over this field and she's laughing and cutting up, but she's giving back as much as he's giving. Right. Like this is where we saw them as equals, like equals in and partners in every way like they mm-hmm. just matched each other like she was not putting up with any of his shit and he wasn't I he agree. wasn't going easy on her and so we just saw how well matched they were and their little walk back after also she stole the um the mallet of death, of death oh yeah which is the black mallet which is his mallet yes you know that was the first thing that she did he's like oh which no she was she's already got the being of cheeky death. before they even yes. started the game yes so it I just love that scene so much because it's the first scene we see where they're seriously playful, but also just like battling each other out mm-hmm. in wits and it's everything else. It's definitely a flirtation disguised yeah. as like, yeah. you know, hating and, yeah. on each other, but they're not really. Yeah. Okay. That almost was my showdown scene too. So I'm so <laughs> glad that I have like multiples in okay. my head. I want to see what yours is. So my showdown Because I think scene. I know what it is. Oh, I know interesting. What it is. <laughs> okay. So this part, this is whenever after they're married... And Kate is actually having a conversation with Edwina. And mm-hmm. Edwina had just told her, oh, I'm in love. Oh, and yeah. he, his name's Mr. Bagwell. He's a second son. He really doesn't have any money. And mm-hmm. um, Kate's like, oh, we'll have him to dinner. And then Anthony shows up during the middle of the day. First of all, that's very telling because Kate's like, oh, he's always busy. I only see him at night. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden, he's showing up in the middle of the day. Yeah. And um, – while after Edwina leaves, Kate's having a conversation telling uh, Anthony about Mr. Bagwell and how they need to entertain him so that they can meet him mm-hmm. and maybe she can chaperone them on like a drive. And the whole time, Anthony is trying to discover, trying to figure out how he can remove the tea situation on the table so that he can <laughs> drag Kate over to him. And so he's like, yes, yes I would like another cup of tea. Oh and she was gosh. like, okay. <laughs> and he was like, like "Ooh, can like, I please have some more of that tea?" And yeah. she was like, "I'm sure Cook can She's make like, some more." Oh no, this is fine. I'll just have no, the last of it. No, it's like I'm cold and thirsty. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Pour some more. Is it like, empty? Can I have another biscuit? And so <laughs> it's just hilarious because Kate uh, meant Anthony just wants to seduce his wife in the middle of yes. the day. And then I thought that it was so beautiful because he was just absently he was like, "Well, I guess I'll provide Edwina with a diary because yeah. I would do mm-hmm. the same for my sisters, mm-hmm. and she's now family." And it just like moves Kate that he would take yes. care of her sister. Like this is not technically his responsibility, yeah, but she kind of gets teary eyed about and it. She and launches herself yeah. over the table that <laughs> he like, just oh, cleared. That's all. It, that's she, all it needs. And he I was like, do? "This worked out perfectly." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So it's just perfect because oh. first of all, Anthony's just being Anthony. That wasn't yes. his aim. Yeah, he and was just, it just happened. Yeah. And I just like that little moment <clears throat> between them, just as husband and wife. And this it, is before any feelings are really admitted. Yeah. They're just kind of still. They're just we're we're partners in life. Yes, sort of thing. exactly. But, yeah. So I just I that don't know. I'm always warmed scene. by that. Scene. It's such a cute scene. Yeah, and I know she's like, you are the nicest man ever. He <laughs> and was, he was like, and the handsomest. And he's the like, I wouldn't say nicest, but he's I would like, say dangerous and like handsome. Dangerous. And she's 
nicest. Like, yeah. no. Nicest. No, nicest. He's like, mm. So I just like, I don't know. It just, yeah, it's a, good it's one. a quieter moment with, um, compared to all of their um, antagonistic in- interactions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I don't know. It's just, it's just nice. I like it. It's yeah, a nice. That one, one was great. Uh, so I'm what good. did you think was my showdown scene? I actually thought the corgi scene in the park oh, was going to really? be one of your scenes. Really? Yes. I do. I do <laughs> like that scene. I just know you like dogs and I just, I do. <laughs> Newton was actually, hilarious. A backup scene was another backup scene was whenever they were, uh, Anthony comes to call after they're engaged and mm-hmm. like Mary is out and Edwina's out and they're mm-hmm. just by themselves or yeah. whatever. And like he throws off Kate's hat and like tells Newton to like <laughs> eat it like good dog. Eat it, eat and it, it's it, just Newton. hilarious. I love how Newton always obeys him. Newton's like he's the great. alpha. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so I cute. love it. I love it. All right, guys. So now that we have done our showdown scene, I just wanted to do like a little kind of pre-discussion. So we had an interesting difference of opinion oh, yeah that's true when viewing the heroine which goes <laughs> to show you that reading is subjective and mm-hmm. readers their own life experiences really color the way that they interpret characters and scenes mm-hmm. and so i thought it was so interesting because when we were having conversations um i had finished the book before and i've read this book a lot a lot more than um juliet has but um so it's almost like you're reading it for the first time it was. again. It really was. It's been so long. I did not remember any of the details. I really just didn't. I, it was almost like, oh, I think I dreamed about that. Yeah, <laughs> you know what exactly. I mean? Like it was so fuzzy in my memory. And I'm sure that a couple other scenes from other Bridgerton books were kind of like I think that's what sure. it was happening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this was like, I think this happens. I'm like, no, that didn't happen. That must be another Bridgerton book, which is why I'm rereading the series. But yeah, it definitely, I, my heart was just like literally like pouring out for Kate. And I felt like so bad you know, just... Like, you were almost upset I about... Was, I was upset. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And so... <laughs> I, I was upset. Whenever we were discussing the book, and um, we usually do this, and we're, we're always, like, fussing at ourselves, like, no, save it for the podcast. I know. But we usually talk about it while we're reading it anyway. And I was like, oh, my God. I'm like, should I pick another one in the series? Are you yeah, okay? Yeah, Jasmine was do freaking out. She's like, like, oh, my God. I should have I should have picked the other one. Is she... Are you mad? Like, I'm like, no. I'm like, I love it, but I'm so hung up right now on Kate's feelings and the mm-hmm. fact that she feels second best, and it hurts me so bad. I want... I'm just like I'm dying. I'm dying inside for her. And why won't Anthony tell her how beautiful she is? And why won't I? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I was like, basically, just she was emo going into meltdown. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she did have like an emo meltdown about Kate. And I thought it was so funny because we were just talking. I was like, man, I just, I didn't, it's not like I read yeah. the scene differently. It's that I wasn't. I don't know. I guess I was a little bit more optimistic for Kate. Like yeah. I knew I could push past it for me and yeah. I didn't, I wasn't as like. But I can tell you I was also projecting a little right, bit. Right. Like you're because more I was, empathizing than sympathizing. Yes. I mean, I was feeling old feelings, yeah. you know, that I've had like Kate and it just, it almost, it Which really, like I almost started crying, you know, it's just like, somebody please help Kate, you know? <laughs> Oh my God, she hates herself. <laughs> you know, I'm like, Which I had, I was like, no, I'm like, I don't think so she does. Jess was worried. And I'm like, well, but she does. She just said, I'm not beautiful. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like reading the quotes to, back to her on, you know, messaging. I know I was a little hysterical. I it was admit funny. It. it was funny. She did but, have me worried for a little bit, yeah. but then of course. Oh, Julie but I love it. But Anthony pulled it all out in the end. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So let's start with the breakdown and we'll get more into details on those specific scenes later. So in the beginning, we're introduced to the Bridgerton clan. I'm going to tell you a little bit about them before we get into it, because the Bridgerton clan, and this is the second book in the series, Mm -hmm. they are wealthy. They're identifiable by their brunette hair. Like all of the kids have the same colored brunette hair, but he can recognize a Bridgerton. And they also have, they're named in alphabetical order. Like an order of birth, yes. it follows the alphabet. I had, I had totally forgotten that too until you told me. Right. So we have Anthony, the oldest, which this is his book, Benedict, Colin, mm-hmm. Daphne, Eloise, Eloise, Francesca, Gregory, and Hyacinth. And Hyacinth. Mm-hmm. So lots of kids. They started when they were young and they were very, very, very much mm-hmm. loved. Like this is an unconventional family. Mm-hmm. And in the beginning of the book, they were talking about the dad, Edmund, who has since yes. passed away, mm-hmm. and how he was very close with his kids, like he would take them out on hikes. He was a very involved father. So 
for Anthony, who's the oldest, his death really affected him like in the worst way. Yes. Because he even says, he's like, I like to think that I had a special relationship with my father, not because he liked me best, but that I'd known him the longest. Yeah, that was, was really like, interesting. So I know. He's like, like no matter how, how old, you know, the I've others always are. known him the mm-hmm. longest. Exactly. Yeah. So Edmund Bridgerton, the dad, he died whenever Anthony was 18 and in the most kind of shocking way because he yes. was stung by a bee and he had been stung before and i like it in the um in the author's note in the back um julia quinn did she talk about about the allergy she talks about how usually especially like bee stings the allergy for bees really doesn't present itself until the second sting anyway so i mean it's fairly common that yeah exactly and also i find it fascinating um adult allergies that present itself like no childhood allergies then all of a sudden you're allergic i had a friend who like all of a sudden she's allergic to shrimp now and she's never been before it's the craziest thing oh wow yeah it's nuts but anyway, so, um, yeah, this is this is the interesting effect that Edmund's death had on Anthony. This is from Anthony's point of view, and he says, Edmund Bridgerton had died at age at the age of 38, and Anthony simply couldn't imagine ever surpassing his father in any way, even in years. And that sums up his internal conflict. Right, right exactly. There. This <laughs> is Anthony's main point of internal conflict. He really, and he knows it's irrational. Like He's mm-hmm. like, I can't even explain it to people because I yeah. know it sounds crazy, but I know that yeah. there's no possible way that I can live past my 38th birthday because he's so enamored of his father. His father was just the man he always wanted to yeah. be. And he was like, there's no way that I could live up to that. And I just feel like I just can't live yeah, past that age. He's never even told his siblings who he Mm-mm. loves, dearly his mother no one this this i want to say it a fear but a belief he's yeah. lived by but he he thoroughly believes that he's not going to live past the age of 38 right exactly you know? so he's kind of been like living life to the fullest pretty much like yellow and he's just like <laughs> you know been with all kind of women and just oh, yeah. like gambling he really doesn't have fear of dying because mm-hmm. he knows that it's going to happen and yeah. soon it's soon ish to him. Right. so anyway he's led an interesting life so far and then we move on to kate and edwina who are the sheffield sisters and what's interesting about them is they are half sisters and Kate is Kate's father has died and all she has left is her stepmother mm-hmm. and her half sister Edwina and I really like the relationship that Julia Quinn creates between these three because it's not the typical oh evil stepmom and vain half sister and right. they don't care about the first daughter they have an amazing relationship it's quite the all opposite, of them yes you know? it's amazing I mm-hmm. love Mary the stepmother she's amazing I do too she's awesome she's like the best mother figure and she even says at one point she's like you know you have to work twice as hard for a child that's not yours that you've been given birth to because you want to do right by them and i was like oh that's a great way to look to think about stuff you know mm-hmm. mary i like that yeah so kate and edwina their family they don't have a lot of money anymore so they're really banking on the girls making advantageous marriages right. to kind of save yeah, they you know they one of them too exactly so their hopes are pretty much on Edwina because mm-hmm. Edwina is gorgeous and mm-hmm. like her her coloring and just like it, it's very Fair, in vogue right now. Blue, blue mm-hmm. eyes. Exactly. Just striking. So she is, Edwina is considered the incomparable of the season. Mm-hmm. And Kate, the older sister, Kate's like 21 and Edwina's 17 and Kate's considered the incomparable's sister. Not yeah. that she's ugly, but just whenever you put them side by side, it's like your eye is drawn to Edwina. Yeah, and this is also Kate's first season because they couldn't afford it before exactly. here. This is their, they're, so they're both coming out at the same time. Right, you know, they, had for their plan, first season. they had to plan their season very carefully, carefully so that it's Kate's all they can not afford. too old mm-hmm. and Edwina's not too young. Too young. Correct. So they have 21 and 17. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, then they're reading in the whistle down and who happens to be in the whistle down on this article? It is the Viscount (laughs) Bridgerton talking about how he's so much of a rake and they don't see him settling down anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So Edwina, Edwina's like, oh, kind of like fangirling over him. Yeah. And Kate's like, oh no, oh no. (laughs) You will find you a suitable husband, but not, not, not Viscount Bridgerton. Mm -hmm. Then we switch to Anthony's point of view. And it just so happens that right as Kate makes that declaration, Anthony's having lunch with his brothers Mm -hmm. and he decides, yeah, I'm going to get married this year. This is um, (laughs) time that I fathered an heir. Mm -hmm. So all he's looking for 
is a woman who is reasonably attractive. He doesn't want an idiot for a wife. And he also wants a woman, this is the most important part, that he could never possibly fall in love with right. because he does not want to leave. He saw how it affected his mother. His mother right? And he does not want to leave behind a he, widow that yeah. would be affected like Violet was. Because yeah. he and, knows he's going to leave behind a widow. Right. And he, he doesn't want to feel, feel bad about mm-hmm. dying either. And he I think he's also afraid of himself mm-hmm. to, of feeling those strong feelings and then knowing it's going to all end soon, Right, exactly. You know? So I love this conversation between his brothers because this is how it goes. <laughs> Who's considered the diamond of the season? And Colin, I believe, or Benedict says, oh, it's Edwina. Oh, does she have a brain? Mm, I believe she does. Good, then I'll marry her. That was it. That was all. <laughs> that was all he needed to know. Yeah. Like yeah, he never even set eyes on her and he was just like, yep. She'll okay, do. That's the one. She'll do. Yeah. I don't even care. Let's get married. Yeah. So this is how Anthony comes to his decision to marry Edwina. Yeah. So then we go to our first ball where they're all together. And Anthony dances with Edwina. Okay. While Kate is talking to Colin. Like Colin Bridgerton, mm-hmm. the third brother, I believe, comes up and talks to her and they have a nice little conversation. And you can tell that Colin notices she's pretty smart right off the bat. He's, right. Because she's, she's sarcastic. She's, she's so not... sarcastic and daring. He's like, ooh, wait. Interesting. <laughs> you're worthy yeah, exactly. of the Bridgerton clan. Exactly. You're worthy to speak to. You know, and so then, um, and she gives him an earful about her brother and what she thinks about this little dance that's going on. Right. But, like that's not mm-hmm. going to go anywhere. Exactly. And so uh, it's <laughs> so when Colin walks off, he tells her. Um, I mean, I'm sorry. When Colin Colin leaves her, he tells his brother, "Oh, she's been talking about you." That Kate Sheffield, she couldn't that say sister, enough about couldn't you. Couldn't say enough about you. Couldn't stop talking about you. He's like, "Oh, great! You know, this will like, be so it's easy." It's important. It's important. Go talk to her because <laughs> I've heard it said that mm-hmm. Edwina said she would never marry. A person right. that her sister has not approved of. Right. And so you're going to have to go talk to the spinster. I'm sure you'll have her eating out of your hands in no time. It's awesome because th- these are just the brothers like totally do- dogging each classic, other. It's classic. Classic so Bridgerton it sibling it's just awesome. teasing. So as soon as Anthony meets her, he realizes that Colin was full of shit basically. Oh, yeah. And that this woman does not like him Mm-mm. whatsoever. Nope. <laughs> Not at all. So she ends up uh, dancing with him. He insists. <laughs> he insists. And she kind of feels like almost like trapped, like, all right, whatever. Yeah, you can't make a yeah. scene in those types of situations. Right. So she didn't want to be too rude or whatever. So they're having this whole conversation. And Anthony makes a big, big mistake. Because he says, oh, Miss Sheffield, you're as lovely as your sister. Mm-hmm. And... Anyone with eyeballs can see that she's not as lovely as her sister. Right. Right. So she immediately is like, oh, no, dude. I, like She says, and you're almost as handsome as your brother, which yeah. I thought was the greatest comeback. <laughs> that was the greatest go- I thought that was, was the greatest. Awesome. And so she now knows you're a fraud. You're just mm-hmm. lying. And then you're he just immediately- buttering her up. Yeah. And in his head, he's immediately like backpedaling like, oh, shit. Why did I say that? Mm-hmm. Like, like you know, I'm, I'm smarter stupid- than that. <laughs> yeah. But it was very interesting because we see these two big personalities clashing for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, they both give as good as they get. Mm-hmm. You know, definitely nobody's backing down in this situation. Right. And we see Anthony is definitely, he even says that he's the type of man that, who's attracted to a challenge because she's mm-hmm. laying the gauntlet down like, you will never be with my sister, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. And he's, he's like, like oh, mm-hmm. oh, really? But when I read that, I immediately thought, She's the challenge, not Edwina. You know? Right, exactly. <laughs> so Anthony breaks his etiquette, his gentlemanly etiquette, I yeah. guess, when Kate just sort of rubs him wrong. And he says that there was something about her that made him positively want to itch to battle with her. Like he just was. I thought that that was such an interesting phrase. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? It's just it's like. It's just like they're just rubbing each other wrong. Fun. He can't shut up and she can't yes. either. And they're just going going after each other with all these little barbs and stuff. It's mm-hmm. awesome. So yeah. the next day. Anthony pays a call with three bouquets of flowers, not just Which I love this callback. This is a callback to the Duke and I. This is what Simon did for his sister Daphne. Yes. I thought it was And he even admits, he admits, oh, well, I took... (laughs) Yeah, I stole this idea from my brother-in-law. I stole this idea from my brother-in-law. And then Kate's like, well, did it work? He's like, well, yeah, she married him. Mm -hmm. So it did. But it's so nice because Kate's never gotten flowers. She's never gotten flowers. Edwina has flowers, like, pouring out. It's all over their their townhouse. As a matter of fact, she's, like, talking to the lilies or something Mm -hmm. when he walks in, he's like, do you always talk to flowers? And she's like totally embarrassed. Caught like, off guard, like, who what? are you in? What are you 
let you in. How did this happen? <laughs> um, and so in, amidst their little conversation and they're having, again, once again, kind of going at each a other. A barbed conversation yes. that can't help themselves. It they always just, ends up like this. It is and it's so, so fun. fun. So it's fun. It's so fun. Um, we hear barking in the hallway and in comes Newton, her little corgi, you know, with um, Mary, her mom, stepmom. Um and Mary's like, Newton needs to go for a walk, you know, have to get him out of the house, whatever. Here, Mr. Bridgerton, or not Mr. Bridgerton. Lord. Like, Lord. Lord Bridgerton, take the, uh, take the, go for a walk with uh, Newton and I kind of like it because it's like you don't know if Mary is kind of setting them up because it wasn't necessary that yeah. Lord Bridgerton go yeah. with her for the dog walk. Well, and Bridgerton even said, because he said, go go walk, maybe you'll run into your sister. She's out in you know, Kirkle with, what's his name, Burbrook. And, um... Even Anthony says says aloud to Kate, is she matchmaking for you yeah. or for her? And then she, Kate's, Kate, like, Kate's like, what? like, not me. No. Not me. Please. As if. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so then they do go on their walk. This is one of the funniest scenes. And I thought you would love this scene because I know how much you love I little dogs. I do love this scene, though. <laughs> it's so cute. So they're on their way on their little walk. Newton gets loose, guys. And this little, little wild tiger Corgi takes off. I love how he describes him. He's like so fat, but he's so fast. <laughs> he just like takes off across like Rotten Row where all yeah. the people are usually um, traveling in their carriages, in their carriages riding and on all horses. This stuff. Right. And who do we see next to the serpentine is Edwina standing there with Lord Burbrook or whatever his name is. And <laughs> Newton is barreling towards her launches into her and knocks her into the water. Okay, yeah. so this causes like a major scene. Um, and, and Anthony's like has some irrational rage going on. He does. He's so he, like, furious. He like blames it somehow on Kate. Yeah, he's and like, she, she goes, like, and how did I orchestrate this yeah, to get my exactly. dog to escape me? And mm-hmm. like, it's hilarious. because she is. And she's even like ducking behind Edwina. Like, ooh, he's really mad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's and, so cute. Uh, I, love, I love the exchange between them. It's like something like he tells her, sarcasm doesn't become you miss sheffield and she's mm-hmm. like nothing becomes you lord bridgerton and oh. i'm just like it's so great and that's whenever she tells newton to shake on him and so yes. gets him all wet it's just so fun because kate yes. will not sit down and take she will shit. not take it she no, will not take it i love it and it's awesome. anthony secretly loves it so i'm just saying <laughs> i don't think he even knows it. it it's just like he can't stop thinking about her well mm-hmm. then she you know she enters his dreams later but anyway so from there um Edwina gets a cold, and so she has to stay home and from all their little parties and whatnot, and they're invited to the Bridgerton musicale. Okay, and so Kate. There's a little nod go. to the uh, to the Smith Smith, Smith, Smith musicals, which y'all, I love. Those those are fun. Y'all so funny. I love it when those pop up in the other ones. Me too. Um, so you know, Kate really doesn't want to go, especially not with Edwina. She'd rather just sit home and read. But yeah, she's Mary's like, like What's we the have point? to go. You need a husband too. Let's go. Yeah. You know, we have to get out and, and see the people, whatever. So they do and they go, well, of course, <laughs> uh, the opera singer who is stunningly beautiful, the yeah, Italian, the Italian opera singer. exotic opera singer. Yeah, Kate notices she's making heavy, heavy, like fuck me eyes at Anthony. And of Anthony even like kisses way. her neck in front of, and she's what? like, your mother's like right there. I was freaking out of that. I was like, Anthony, what the hell, dude? But you, could, you could tell whenever she's having a conversation with Violet, Violet even looks at Anthony and like, son, there's a time Yeah, and place. Violet like, was not, a little, but and, and right before this though, we learn that Anthony has been having erotic dreams of yes. Kate and he's like, mm-hmm. I've got to get her out of my head. Yes. So it's like, so he's we kind know. of like belligerent and he's sort of a little bit angry, mm-hmm. you know, about the fact that he can't get her out of his head. So and he's she's like, here. Yes. And, and this, she was a former lover, uh, the Italian, sorry, the Italian opera singer is a former lover. And Kate is there. He's like, so I'm just going to put all my attention on her. Okay. Exactly. So we so, know his motivations, but yeah. Kate's just put out and she just wants to find a quiet place away from all of yeah. this. She yes. doesn't want to watch this. I know. She's like, no, this is enough. So she kind of goes out into the hallway and is just resting. And then, of course, she hears laughter, musical laughter, and his voice coming out into the hallway. So she runs and hides in a study well of course what does she hear but a click of the doorknob and in they're they come. coming in okay y'all she hides under <laughs> the desk when she describes herself squatting like a frog, frog under yeah. the desk i was rolling i just laughing. have the best yeah. mental images during this read because yes. she paints such a vivid picture that i just can't <laughs> it was so good and so okay so this she overhears, whole time she overhears, yeah now she overhears something really important 
He says, because she's like, well, I hear you're on the marriage mart. You're about to, you know, be wed or whatever. And he's like, well, you know, I'm not going to love my wife. I can still have a mistress, you know. Exactly. Um, I don't plan on marrying plan anybody on marrying that I love. love. So that's not going to so be a point. And so for Kate, she's overhearing this and yes. like, and you want to marry my sister? And you want to marry my sister? Are Hell you kidding no. me? And no. I really like that, that she overheard that. And she's mm-hmm. like, dude, not even <laughs> getting close to no. Edwina. No. Because she really loves her sister, of course. But then, of course, <clears throat> Anthony has to spot so, her. It's of great. Course. Of course, he goes to get a drink right behind the desk, turns around, sees her, and ex- basically dismisses the opera singer mm-hmm. after they have almost like a battle underneath the desk where she's... But I love <laughs> how he like, before he sees Kate, he's mm-hmm. like, and I can't get her out of my mind and I smell yes. her perfume and, and why am I smelling her, smelling her now? Smelling lilies and soap is yeah. what he says. And he's, he's like, smelling. and if I moved this way, like he was going to take a big step her. forward and he wouldn't have seen Kate, but mm-hmm. he lingered because her smell was right there. Yes, he I could Love smell it. her it and then so that's great. when he he said the smell's coming from and he looks down at the desk and there she is squatting yeah. like a toad it's underneath great. the desk it's perfect it's so it's so funny but then it gets really charged really fast oh, he yeah. just misses the opera singer she leaves and he basically he she won't come out and he hauls her up physically out and this leads to their first kiss. Okay. And I want to read like a little quote. This is from his point of view and what he's thinking. Because he was kind of like getting up in her face, trying to intimidate her. Like, what do you think you're doing? Sneaking in here, blah, 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 blah. So he says, or thinks, I'm sorry. Intimidation had been his intention. And so he'd move closer and closer until she, an innocent, could only be cowed by his presence. And the finger he'd been trailing along her cheek just to torture her, he told himself, suddenly became a hand that cupped the back of her head as his lips took hers in an explosion of anger and desire. I love how his intimidation Ooh. turned into a seduction. I think yes. that was such a wonderful wonderful just like it just encompasses their relationship mm-hmm. and how it is it's very fiery it's yes. very back and forth and it's almost just like combustible and i think the anger is angered himself too oh, absolutely that he's it's totally he can't control his desire for her it's, it's totally driving anger him mad, at himself you know and and he's also mad at himself for acting on it which causes mm-hmm. him to be such that's a when dick he, after that's when he becomes yes a total dick right after um, and he pretty much just tells her, like, even though he just kissed her, that he still plans on marrying his yes. sister, which is a horrible thing to do. Y'all, at this point, I was like, somebody Kate's give me an like, envelope opener so I can stab him yeah. because I was so angry. This is where my heart was like, Kate, no, you know, because she she already feels second best. And then he's like, well, I'm still going to marry her. Even, yeah. And she's like, after that kiss? No, you're not. He's like, watch me, you know. Well, and it's not like <clears throat> Kate was like, oh, yeah, you're going to marry me now. But just like, yes. how could you even think about marrying exactly. my sister knowing that you've already kissed me and yeah. stuff like that? Yeah. But I like, though, and Juliet cannot see past her rage, but I <laughs> like that. Anthony is really doing this. He knows what he's saying is going to go down the wrong way with Kate. And that's yeah. his purpose because I he think he says he is self-destructive. Yeah. He does yeah. not want her to think good well of him, of him because yes. he's like, I'm, I can't marry her because yes. there's this spark between us. And, and I can't let that grow into anything else. Right. Exactly. He says yeah. that there's absolutely no spark between him and Edwina, but with Kate, it's there. And he's like, I have to push that really far away. Yeah. And so that's really... That's really why he acts like that. I'm not saying it justifies it, but this is his motivation, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I'm like, "Mm, he's going to get some sense knocked into him eventually. (laughs) But yeah, yeah, in that moment, you can't help but your heart break for Kate because it's just, she doesn't understand. But I knew, I was like, he's going to have to apologize for that. And I knew he would and, you know, he does. But yeah, I was like, oh, so So the apology happens at a country house party at Aubrey Hall. And I love, I love the country house parties Mm -hmm. too. But um, so Aubrey Hall is the state of the Bridgertons and Anthony even is thinking he's like man I acted like a real big ass I have got to apologize to Kate Mm -hmm. like this that was going too far to in you know in the heat of the moment well whenever all the guests get there Violet is you know typical matchmaking mama Mm -hmm. and I find this interesting as well because not only earlier in the scene it's like who is Mary trying to set up Anthony with Kate yeah. or Edwina. Yeah. So is Violet. Violet sees. <laughs> so Edwina and Mary go in the house and Kate's like, would you mind if I can go walk in your garden? She's like, go have at it. Yeah. Then Anthony comes and he's like, hey, what's up? And then whenever he's talking to his mom, he's like, I think I'll go for a walk. And his mom's like, yeah, well, why don't you go in the garden? <laughs> why don't you go in the flower garden? So it's I right like there. how Violet's definitely mm-hmm. pushing. And she says, she thinks in her point of view, says her eldest son interest, interest in the Sheffield was most intriguing now if she could only figure out which Sheffield he was interested in. 
So then this yeah. leads to the Pow Mau game. Yes. And the Mallet of Death. Yes. Which is one of our favorite scenes in Juliet's showdown <laughs> scene. So I really funny. like it. We see Daphne enter the picture. Yeah, Pretty so much all playful. the Bridgertons. And Daphne's kind of explaining the rules to Kate. And just like the Bridgertons mm-hmm. are a bloodthirsty lot. And the actual aim of the game is truly less a game about yeah. winning more than making the other player lose. Okay, on the Netflix series, this has to be included. I hope that this <laughs> is like the longest, best scene, scene ever. Yeah. But I really like it. And mm-hmm. Um, they let Kate have first pick because Anthony went up to the house to go get Edwina and like Kate's all worried, like don't take too long, wants to make yeah. sure that he's not like trying to compromise Edwina right. while she's not there to run interference. Mm-hmm. And she picks the black mallet and they're like, ooh, I knew I liked her. That's the mallet of death. That's <laughs> Anthony's mallet. Let's give him the pink mallet. And so it's all to <laughs> it's exacerbate so Anthony. It's just the funniest, it's the funnest scene. Daphne makes comments about mm-hmm. you're going to fit in with the Bridgertons well. Mm-hmm. We don't just invite anybody to play this game with us during the game anthony is honestly really flirting with kate Mm -hmm. and um he even says like at the end of the game he should have been watching edwina but he really was watching kate the whole time and it's so telling so telling and whenever he does mess up kate's game on purpose i love this little (laughs) interplay um kate's like watching him because he's like aiming at her ball and she's like what are you gonna do to me and he goes what am i not gonna do to you might be a more appropriate question and it's just so charged (laughs) like she doesn't get it it's a little innuendo there (laughs) so after the game where kate wins quote unquote because she pretty much like knocked Anthony out the game like she didn't actually win the game but she did knock him into the lake which was she's (laughs) like it felt like I won it felt like victory and Daphne's like we can't play after that that's like the winning the winning stroke so she wins so Anthony he's just having so much fun and he all of a sudden realizes that her good opinion of him meant a great deal and he really wants to know like Mm -hmm. does she still hate me and so he asked her that and like he gets all up close to her you know another little like Mm. proximity intimidation kind of thing and kate's kind of breathy and he was like that's what i thought and so it's like (laughs) she doesn't even answer the question exactly so we know this is anthony anthony's not there yet yeah but his his subconscious is there like he's And he's and he's opening up a little bit, you know, sharing his family with her. He did apologize. He's not acting quite the cad as he no, described no, himself. No, they still have they still you have know. their playful banter. Yeah, they have their playful banter, but it's not insulting or anything like that. Right. It's right. Uh, it's almost like they're, they're just in competition with each other, honestly. Mm-hmm. And it's but it's a fun competition, or it's just very enjoyable. Yes. Okay. So then we have that night before dinner. Okay, and we're all, you know, they're all gathering downstairs or whatever. Mm-hmm. And Kate is hanging out with uh, Penelope Featherington. Is it Featherington or Featherston? I always Featherington. Get it Featherington. Okay. Um, who's so funny. And they are accosted by Cressida. She's basically bullying her and then insulting her and then got another like fop to come over. But and Anthony do the same. swoops in. But Anthony swoops in and basically cuts. Cressida in front of everyone and then escorts Penelope into dinner. And I remember Kate said, in that moment, he was my hero. Yes. And I loved that almost so was one of my showdown scenes. Her opinion, her it. opinion's really changing. Yes. And she admits it, you know. So that night we have a thunderstorm and Kate had been wandering around looking for a book to read in the library. Like she's just she's kind of restless she, she's restless. Storms. She can't sleep. And we discover that she has a serious fear, not just like, oh, a thunderstorm, it's scaring me, like petrifying in the fetal position, you know, under a table kind of fear. Right, and it's been happening since she was little. Since she was a little girl. And she kind of hid the fact from Mary and Edwina that it's still happening. Yes, she's been, and because she said it makes her feel weak, Mm -hmm. and she doesn't want anybody else to worry about her. I feel like that's a very Kate thing. She doesn't want anybody to worry about her. She wants to worry about other people. She wants to mother everybody else, but everybody Mm -hmm. just let her be. But Anthony finds her, and he comforts her, and it is a lovely scene. There's so many good scenes. Right, and I like the situation too, because to distract her, she's like well tell me about you tell me about your family tell me me about your father and so that's a very very important Mm -hmm. relationship to anthony and the fact that he's opening up to the fact that he's opening up to kate and um they're having this conversation it's like it's just 
the relationship is blossoming mm-hmm. and it's beautiful. So that was just a great bonding scene where, like you said, like he's opening up to her. Mm-hmm. It just was awesome. So the next day, Kate goes back to the gardens and Anthony sees her in the, like from his window or whatever. So he comes out and they have sort of a flirty moment, but she's made the decision that she's going to withdraw her, basically barring him from Edwina. Mm-hmm. And so she tells him this and you can see he's sort of disappointed. He was thinking she might be saying something else, you know. And I like that he was like stunned. He's stunned. He's like, that Wait. she was like, yeah, I guess you can marry Edwina now because he was like, that's not how I thought this conversation yeah. was going to go. Yeah, not at all. So he's not, he's disappointed, you know, but right at that moment, a bee starts buzzing. Right. Around. Right. As he said, Kate, I, and then the sentence is never finished. First of all, before yes. he gets to the bee scene, what do you think he was going to say? Like, do you think he would have, like, said something like, I don't want to marry Edwina? I think that he would have said something. I think he was. Because the whole weekend, he's been thinking about kissing her. Mm-hmm. He's been trying to find ways to, And the you point, know? the point why he even sought her out in the mm-hmm. morning, he didn't have to. He didn't have to. He just saw all. her. She's like, oh, she's alone. Yeah. Let me go down there and see her. Exactly. You know, right now. He really wants to be near her. With her. And I think that he, even, like, during the course of their conversation, um, whenever they're kind of bonding over, like, being the oldest and caring about their mm-hmm. siblings and like mm-hmm. wanting what's best for them. And she's like, well, you're the oldest, you know. And he was like, yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so it's like, he knows that they're clicking. And I feel like that moment that happened like right there in the garden. Yeah. He's just, I think he's resigned. He's resigned that he can never marry Edwina mm-hmm. while Kate's there. Like It would have been awesome if he had said it before the bee came. Me too. But the bee changes the bee comes. everything. The bee comes. So let's go <laughs> get into the bee scene. It's fucking bees, man. <laughs> It it's honestly, it makes one of the funniest scenes, it though. It does. Funny, this fun, but this also sad. Funny and sad at the same time. It's, it's, it's so crazy. weird. Okay, this was a bizarre scene. Okay, so basically what happens is the bee starts buzzing around. Anthony's like, be still, be still. He gets like petrified. Oh, and she's like, out. he's freaking out because he's thinking a bee killed my father. A bee could kill her right now. And he's just freaking out. I think that it's an important distinction to make, too, because he said that he almost had like a fatalistic relationship mm-hmm. with bees where he would go around them and just like and just see if they would sting yeah, him. see if they would And he's swing. never been yeah. afraid of them before. They always hang around Aubrey Hall. But I think the distinction is a bee's near it's Kate. It's near Kate. And this is exactly. different. He That's already exactly has feelings what I for her. Yes. He already has feelings this for was her. A, this and was, it's just. Yeah. This was proof to me that he cares for her deeply because he's thinking about I I can't imagine not being without her, mm-hmm. you know, if something would happen to her. It's like the last person that he loved this fiercely was his father. Not that he doesn't lo- mm-hmm. love his mother or his siblings, but this is like a new love and it's just fresh. Mm-hmm. You know, that conversation is fresh. The bee and then again. here's a freaking bee who stings Kate right on the collarbone. And- I know, right on the collarbone, like right underneath her collarbone. Okay, y'all. So he is insisting, <laughs> he grabs her, pulls the stinger out and when he goes, he's like, it's not enough. I have to get the venom out. So he leans down to suck the venom out of her collarbone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you and can imagine. And she's freaking out because she's, she's like, what she's the like, fuck Anthony, are you doing? it's a bee. Stop it. What are you doing? <laughs> like, dude. And, and of course. And of course. Up steps Mary. Um. Anthony's mother and Mrs. Featherington, the biggest gossip, gossip ever in London. Oh, okay. she's horrible. And like they're frozen. And of course, <laughs> she's looking over his head while he's leaning over, sucking on her collarbone, which looks like he's sucking on her tit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> she's just like, they're like, <laughs> Miss Featherington said he was sucking, kissing your boobies. And, she's and, like, and she won't shut up about the damn boobies. And I'm like, shut up. <laughs> Violet's like Miss Featherington. That's inappropriate but language. Anthony's just like oh, God. Anthony's just like that's fine. We're gonna get married, right? And Kate's like, no, it can't. We yeah. can't possibly getting married. But I also like <clears throat> in his internal thoughts, he's really thinking about like while he's standing there listening to Kate being like, this mm-hmm. can't be happening. He's like satisfied. Like he feels mm-hmm. like almost he feels a peace, a peace wash yeah. over him because he really, really wants her. He wants and he her. He never would have had her. But all but of now, sudden, all this of a sudden, situation. he has a reason, and he mm-hmm. can't. Y'all, he can't not. He, she would be ruined. Yeah, by okay? honor. Yeah. Yeah. So there's just no way. So, and she, so she can't refuse him. Even at the same time, she's thinking, I didn't want it to be this way. I didn't want to force him into marriage. You right. Know? Nobody will believe that They're, you really yeah. wanted to marry me. They're going to think I trapped you exactly. into it. Exactly. Exactly. Which, you know. 
nobody wants nobody wants that said about them. So Edwina is not surprised at all that they're getting married. And I really like that. She I was like, too. I could see that. I knew that there was something going mm-hmm. on. He's just always looking at you. And I mm-hmm. just love He's that. Smitten yeah, Violet and Mary, they're delighted. They're planning the wedding. Everyone's speculating about how she trapped him. They're all like hanging around their townhouse. <laughs> but Anthony pays a call to Kate and seduces her in the drawing room. I really like that scene because he just like can't get enough of Kate. Mm-hmm. And um, but he also does lay out some important distinctions for Kate about expectations in the marriage and saying how friendship and respect are really important in a marriage. And that's all she should really expect that there's not going to be any love in this marriage that she should not expect that. And he wants to be very clear because he thinks that she's a practical woman Mm -hmm. and would want to know. And she's kind of like, Yes, but also like, thank you for telling me you could never love me, you know, like in her mind. And she's put mm-hmm. out, but she she's kind of distracted because yeah. <laughs> Anthony is kind of giving her a good time. Yeah. So after their marriage, I also thought this was hilarious. Whenever they're in the carriage after they get married, mm-hmm. on the way to Anthony's bachelor lodgings, because he's like, I think we need some privacy. I mean, right. he has seven, no, six siblings living in the in, R- in Bridgerton, Bridgerton house. house. Yeah. So he's like, well, we're going to go here for a little privacy. Kate's so nervous about it and she's like well maybe we can just hold off and anthony's yeah. like no <laughs> can let me just have like a week reprieve so yeah. i can prepare <laughs> yeah and he's like yeah tell me how exactly are you going to prepare <laughs> you're a so, virgin how yeah, are you going to prepare exactly and so this is him having a little fun with her being like <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah yeah how are you going to prepare huh? yeah please <laughs> yeah. give me the details can I watch on you prepare? this <laughs> can i watch you prepare <laughs> what are we doing and she doesn't know and she's like please you know i don't know she's but just anyway. nervous kate's internal conflict is that For her, she's always thinking about the fact that Anthony always pursued Edwina, and now he's stuck with her. Right. So she says, and she thinks, she was acting foolishly, a prisoner of her own insecurities. Insecurities she hadn't even known that she possessed until she'd met Anthony. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is an important distinction, because if she was with any other guy, I don't think it would bother her. But it's because her and Anthony have already developed feelings for each other, feelings that they're not admitting. This is really why the insecurities are coming up, mm-hmm. bubbling up. I don't think they would have bubbled up with anybody else but Anthony. I agree. And um, so while they're in the midst of making love, Anthony says, you're beautiful, so unbelievably beautiful. And this really upsets Kate because she just like, she heard from Mary mm-hmm. that any man could get pleasure. Does not have to be with somebody that he cares for. Right. For women, it's harder. They normally have to care about somebody to get pleasure out of, you know, having the experience, sex. right. And so she asks Anthony, she's like, who do you think of when you make love to me? She's upset. And she's yes. like, I'm not beautiful. And it, th- this is really upset you. This is <laughs> this the is part what, where she was having her off, breakdown. I was having and down. so I do like um, Anthony definitely reassures her. He and like you said, you don't know if she believes it. And I think by the end, at least she knows I think that she does by the end for sure. Yeah. And he says, listen, well, I desire you. I burn for you. I can't sleep at night for wanting you. Even when I didn't like you. You, I lusted for you. It's the most maddening, beguiling, damnable thing. There it is. You're the most beautiful woman in England. And if everyone else doesn't see that, then they're all bloody fools. Because he's <laughs> made the observation yeah. earlier that And we've it's been only, seeing it internally in his head for a while. Right. And but just, he's never spoken it. You and know. saying how gorgeous Kate is and mm-hmm. only compared to Edwina, would somebody be drawn to Edwina? So I really like that the distinction he really he's like, no, mm-hmm. you are absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. And he really need to say that out loud. Too. He did. I needed to hear it out loud. I know. <laughs> I was very happy he said it. You know, I was scared <laughs> she didn't believe him. Yes. Okay. So but then I was really happy because right after this we see a very contented a period. Kate. Yes, yes, exactly. A period. Like they've been married for weeks now. Right. And she I even liked how Kate thought marriage, she decided agreed with her mm-hmm. because she's just enjoying life. She's enjoying being and a married woman. An she's enjoying excellent uh Viscountess. Yes. She's just like she's, she's born she's, to the role. Right. She's doing all of those things. She's has her time with him, uh, all her nights with him. Oh yeah. You all know. night long all she night says. Long she said they barely sleep and there's no separate bedrooms for them yeah, no not mm-hmm. at all and when her sister edwina comes to visit her i love how edwina said um you know 
<laughs> she comments on how um, he looks at her mm-hmm. at the balls. And she's like, what do you mean how he looks at me? She goes, the other night at so-and-so's ball, he looked absolutely smoldering. Yeah, like, like didn't he, just, like, push other people yeah, out Yeah, he pushed some man, Mr. Havensham or something out of the way so he could hurry and get to her, yeah. you know. And just, like, all he does is linger and smolder and, and look at her. Whistle and whisper. down. Whistle yes. down's writing about it in her article. Yeah. So it's like other people are definitely seeing yeah. outward signs. Yeah, whistle down keeps saying, mm, I believe this is a love match, mm-hmm. you guys. Exactly. <laughs> and Kate, of course, she's like, oh, it's not a love match. Yeah. But. It and, is. Um, I know. And so this is where Edwina also admits her, she has found her scholar, her Mr. Bagwell. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> that's all she wanted. I really yeah. like the fact that Edwina, even being considered the most beautiful girl mm-hmm. of this season, all she wants is a nice man who's a scholar. Like mm-hmm. this was like her big point. She's like, I really yes. want somebody who's like learned. This is, and this is a very sweet sister moment. It really touched my heart. Kate says, she realizes that Edwina had all this pressure on her to save the family because of mm-hmm. her beauty. And all she ever wanted was that simple life and a simple man. Right. You know? And she's so relieved she's because relieved. Mr. Bagwell is a second son. He has no money. No money. He just, you know, doing the college thing. And it ended and up being Kate was the one who sort of saved them. You right. Know? Exactly. So now Edwina can just pursue love no matter what. And yeah. she's really happy for Edwina. She's yeah. like, I'm so it's glad. A great moment. I'm so glad that you weren't pressured into yeah. marrying somebody you didn't want to because of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so then we have that moment. Anthony comes home during the middle of the day. Your yes, car showdown scene, my showdown which scene. really is a great scene. Oh, my it God. Is. I love how so he just good. like the way that um, Edwina and Anthony kind of tease each other. She's like, I always wanted an older brother. This is so much fun. I don't mm-hmm. know why Eloise always complains about you it's or like, whatever. It's like, what? It's just so <laughs> just fun. Complaining. I just like it because they have it a real was, very good cute. brother yes. and sister bonding yes, moment. It is. It's great. And so that night, um, a thunderstorm hit. And yes. Kate is already asleep, but she's having these nightmares where she's yeah, talking. Anthony like knows the storm's coming and yes. stays up. I think yes. he like wants to make sure she's okay. Yes. And that was so my heart. I was like, okay, Anthony, I love you so much. I just love you so much. Yeah. <laughs> and he's because taking he's taking care of her constantly. And he's, he's just thinking in his head. Yes. I know that during the scene, he does say there's something going on between us. He's not stupid mm-hmm. and he knows it, but he's not ready to call it love yet. Yeah. And he says that. So like. He knows. He's really he on knows, the precipice. But he's just, yeah, he's, and it's sort of like the tension is mounting inside of him because mm-hmm. he can't stop looking at her. He can't stop touching her. He can't stop thinking about her. I mean, he's he's in love. Yes, you know? exactly. He's in love. He can't even go throughout the day without wanting to come back home because yeah, he, he's like, yeah. he misses Kate. So yes. then he hears her in her nightmare during the thunderstorm say, crying out for mama. Mm-hmm. Mama, no, but she doesn't no, call no, Mary mama. mom. She yeah, calls, she calls her, her mother. Or mother, yeah. And so, um, that's when when she wakes up he said you know and he he tells her tells her all this stuff he says i think you need to talk to mary about Mm -hmm. okay and so they do they go to mary and this is where we find out where all of this fear stemmed from yeah this thunderstorm fear the thunder her mother died during a thunderstorm not only did that but kate was three years old she walked into the room and saw her basically in an agony of death Mm -hmm. you know this sort of pretty much with the lightning flashing on her 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 Simultaneously. Same, simultaneously she died she like opened her mouth and like a basically an agonizing scream which would be traumatizing to anybody to anyone, especially a three-year-old you know, and, and um lightning struck a tree it hit the window there's glass shattering and yeah, here you have this little child stuff coming. yeah so basically so she's been having nightmares ever since but yes. now that she knows she doesn't remember but knowing it makes her feel better and she even tells anthony she's like you know what you know what i think i think that next time a storm happens i think i'll be perfectly fine mm-hmm. and he's like oh yeah okay but then also this is such <laughs> a very interesting take anthony feels a little bit jealous yeah. about kate because she's overcome she's this fear it's like mm-hmm. she had the fear and now she's like at peace and so mm-hmm. he says kate had fought her demons and won whereas he who had acknowledged his demons but refused to fear them was now petrified with terror and yeah. all because the one thing he swore would never happen had come to pass he had fallen in love with his wife yep. so we get the we get the admission <clears throat> at least internally that he is like i'm head over here hills in love with my wife and this is a terrible thing because now i'm afraid to die now i'm not looking forward to death so this is kind of his trigger this is anthony's trigger whenever they're making love that night because he feels kind of desperate in the mm-hmm. midst of all this and they're making love and at the end kate's like i hope we'll always be like this always and forever yeah. always and forever is his like trigger because he's like there's no forever there's, <laughs> there's no forever. there's barely an always because we, we, i'm gonna got die a couple years left in nine years <laughs> mm-hmm. and 
he runs away to Bridgerton House. I, I Honestly, it's kind of funny. I love how she can inject some levity into this really dramatic moment. Because yeah. whenever he's getting dressed, he's like putting his leg in his shirt. She, and he goes, <laughs> she's like, are you all right? He says, I'm fine. He goes, then why are you putting your leg in your armhole of your shirt? It's, <laughs> it's, it's funny so in funny. the midst of this drama, this yes, high drama that's yes, happening. So he good. runs away. He does not know what to do with his emotions. And Kate's strangely kind of calm about it. And just like she knows that there's something that... And Anthony, there's something in Anthony's past, something that bothers him, and she knows he really needs to talk about it. Mm-hmm. So he, she's just kind of letting him have his time. She gets a note from Eloise, the sister, the next morning saying that Anthony's at Bridgerton House and he mm-hmm. looks terrible. You should come over. So whenever Kate goes there and Eloise is just like, yeah, he's been over here since four o'clock in the morning. I really think you should go check him out. She goes in there. Anthony's like asleep on his desk. And he basically is just pushing her away. And yeah. she wants him to talk about it. Yeah. And he's just like, I, I need time to think if you just, I'm going to be back in a couple of days. Like, yeah, I just, just can't go think. Away. Go away. Just go go away. away. He's not being very nice about it, but he's <clears throat> also, it's almost like the way that he's talking, he's, he's so overwhelmed. He can't even think mm-hmm. straight. And terrible for Kate because Kate's like fucking fine. Mm-hmm. So she like just out. finally leaves <laughs> and he gets drunk. And then the next day, Colin and Benedict come there and just like they're talking. I love how they're talking loud. They're yeah. cracking nuts. And they're like, you think he's hungover? I guess he's hungover. Yeah. Yeah. Like doing it on purpose. And they're I like, love oh, their bond. Crack them, crack, crack, crack them louder. Yeah, <laughs> like exactly. Really being. And I love how they basically just say, you're in love with your yeah. wife. What is more simple than that? Yeah, like, go, just go home, home, Anthony. Go home. And all of a sudden, tell it just clicks with Anthony. And he's just like, why am I wasting my time? I need to You're tell right. her I love her. You're yeah. right. And I love that. And I he, like, it didn't take, you know, an act of God to yeah. push him. You know? <laughs> just his brothers knocking just some sense into him. Just his brothers being themselves. Yeah. And just being like, just, it's fucking simple, dude. You're making it into a really big yeah. deal. Just go <laughs> tell him. mountain out of a molehill, dude. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so Anthony's excited and he's like, I'm yes, going home I'm to tell, tell her my I wife. love her. <laughs> I know. I love they're like, so we'll see you in a week. He goes, two, maybe yeah. three. Yeah. He's like, yeah, you're never going to see me. I'm going to be holed up at my house. And With my wife. Bye. <laughs> bye. See ya. So when he gets home, he finds that um, Kate is off in the park with Edwina and Mr. Bagwell. So he yeah, goes in search of Yeah, she's chaperoning, which, which is I so cute. Which I think that's hilarious. If I was yes. ever a chaperone, I'd just be like, it's fine. Y- y'all can yeah. go in the corner there. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> y'all, can, y'all can sneak off into the shadows right there. Yeah, we would be great chaperones, yeah, you and me. Yeah, we'd be so totally amazing <laughs> chaperones. Yeah, I, I'm the perfect like chaperone. corrupting everybody. Mm, I know. <laughs> so anyway, so he gets gets to the park. He goes to the park in search of her. He's like, I've got to find her now. He gets on the horse and he's riding through down Rotten Row and he runs into the dowager who's like stalling him for a second. And he looks around and, he's, and they hear this like clamoring scream or whatever. And there's a curacle out of control this uh, with the dog barking and he knows that bark newton's no, bark newton. it's yeah, newton it's newton and all of a sudden he sees the curricle crash and the the carriage flip over and he knows his wife, his wife his wife is you can't, there you can't do anything can't do about anything. that type of thing yeah that was like serious like moment i was like oh my god so he runs over there and finds out edwina is okay she was kind of like thrown a little bit free and so is mr bagwell but kate is underneath like was sort of trapped underneath the curacle yeah. it's like anthony's worst fears come yes. to life yes that she and, and i love all this internal thought this was this was another one of my showdown scenes because this is where it all clicks where he realizes it doesn't matter Mm-mm. how much time we have we have you to hold go on to at each any other time. at any moment anybody could die you know so we, um, you know, he gets in there and basically confesses his love to her while she's trapped in the thing. He's like, do you want to get out? He's like, yeah. You know, he's like, will you tell me you love me then? She goes, yeah, just like, get me out. <laughs> it's like so cute. <laughs> I love how she's like, you got bloody good timing, like yeah. motioning to her trapped in a carriage. I like, know. Like, of course, my, yes. this is classic. <laughs> this is so Bridgerton, you know. <laughs> and when he pulls her out, she does have a broken leg. It's pretty serious. It's and, pretty um, ghastly. I would pass I know, out too. Kate I passes out and I was like, girl, out. I don't blame you. I don't want to see that mess. Oh. No. Yes. It reminds so, me of that recent video of that gymnast who dislocated both of her. Oh, I saw I it. I, I didn't watch it. I can't. I'm not even watching it. Anyway. I, I, yeah. No. It was gross. No, thank you. I can't even. <laughs> I watched it once and I was oh. like scarred. When I watch sports injuries and stuff no, like that, I'm gross. like, I okay. want to vomit. Stop Moving it. On. Okay. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> 
Leg injuries freaking us out over here. We're having a meltdown. All right. So um, in the midst of all of this, when he's like, you know, Kate, can you hear me? And he's freaking out thinking she's hurt. He's like, it wasn't supposed to be you. It's supposed to be me. He's saying all these like weird things. So when they get home, he's like, she's like, you were saying some really strange things. What do you mean? I like how he tries to like brush it off. Like, huh? What? What are you talking about? And she's like, no, no. let's come clean. <laughs> no. Let's come clean. I love that she never backs down mm-hmm. to him. And yeah. so he finally confesses his fear of his own mortality and that he just does not believe that he's going to live past 39. And that was the whole reason. So he just, he tells her everything. Yeah. And she's like, she's understanding. She's like, you're wrong, but I understand it. And I really don't think that you'll ever be able to get over it until you pass that mark until you pass 38. But in the meantime, Mm -hmm. Let's live life to the fullest here. She's like, Yolo, I, she said, hello. I could have died today. And he's like, don't even talk about it. He's like, she's like, well, I could have. Yeah. You know, exactly. we don't know when we're going to go. So let's love each other, you mm-hmm. know? And so it's just a beautiful, All beautiful you need is love. So I love and it. And then the we have epilogue. our epilogue. Our epilogue which is was perfect. just a fun, just a fun mm-hmm. the whistle down was just like, I love, this is a little aspect we didn't talk about, Kate. She likes trying new things. Like, she's mm-hmm. not afraid to start new things. And <laughs> even she, when she's bad. <laughs> even when she's bad at it. Well, she wants to try the flute. And so I guess Anthony really took this YOLO mentality to heart because he decided to learn the flute alongside. The, okay. No, the trumpet, I mean, the I trumpet think. Yeah. alongside of um, Kate's flute. Yeah. So the epilogue is whistled down <laughs> talking about um, Anthony's 39th birthday and how they did a concert in the house and their youngest son, Miles, jumped up and was like, can you please stop mom and dad can y'all please stop (laughs) and how like none of the guests like interrupted miles from being rude they're like yeah please stop (laughs) stop. it's like so terrible Mm -hmm. and so it was just kate it ended with kate and anthony um in bed just talking about like oh this is your 39th and he was like yeah i spent all day like talking to my dad just telling him everything and like He's finally over it now. Yeah. He's finally just like, this is my life. It's a good life and I feel okay. And we've passed the mark now. Now I'm 39 and I've officially surpassed my father in years. And I just thought that was a really wonderful way to leave off with Anthony. Just like hopeful and uplifting and just seeing that they're still crazy, um, doing crazy things in their old age. It was just fun. And also like seeing whenever they have kids and I'm just like, they're so cute. They're procreating. Mm-hmm. So anyway, there's much more <laughs> to the Bridgerton series there than is. just Anthony and Kate. You should really go pick up the other books. I, it's so hard to pick a favorite. I mean, I really love Anthony and Kate. Mm-hmm. Everyone loves Colin's book. I do book. too. That's one of my favorites. I Colin's have to say Colin's book it. is an amazing mm-hmm. book. I enjoy Eloise's book. Francesca's such a different one. I don't want to like spoil any plots for them, but I just love this family because I, the dynamic just between them is amazing and then between their significant others, it's amazing too. Then also Juliet had mentioned the second epilogues. You should read the Bridgertons happily ever after after you've read um, all of her books and they have some really good scenes. Even they have kind of like Violet's story, mm-hmm. Violet and Edmund whenever they're young. Aww. And it's just such a cute story because like- Makes me a little sad. This isn't really <laughs> this isn't really a spoiler, but Violet never <clears throat> remarries. You know, it, right. Edmund was her only love, and so I just thought that was really nice, like seeing them. Um, they almost had an Anthony and Kate relationship, which you should go read that because it's really fun. And then, yeah. if you keep reading the series, you will discover who is Lady Whistledown, and it's fun. So definitely go read for that, guys. We hope that you enjoyed today's episode, and we look forward to the next one where we'll be discussing The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening. This goes out to all the fangirls. Life's better with a little H-E-A. 